Hi Kinders, Mrs. Croft here again. Today we're going to learn about another sense. Our main topic of today's lesson is going to be the sense of smell. Can you tell me what part of your body you use to smell things? Yes, that's right, your nose. Now, close your eyes and imagine what bacon smells like. Oh, yeah. Or how about some chocolate chip cookies? Can you imagine what those smell like? Now, let's think of something else. Let's think about a flower. Can you imagine what flowers smell like? Well, your sense of smell helps you recognize things like that. Every time you inhale, let me move my picture here, or you breathe in, a lot more than air goes up your nose. Along with air, thousands of tiny molecules and small pieces of things too small to see enter your nose each time you breathe. They are called odor molecules. And together they make up what is we call scents. Like the smell of things, scents and odors are smells. When the man in this picture inhales, the odor molecules travel up his nose and then he smells the scent of his cocoa or coffee, whichever one he's drinking. Molecules are microscopic, so small that you can't see them without a microscope. But they're floating around in the air all the time. There are millions of odor mo molecules in the air, especially hovering around everything that has a scent. You may have smelled smoke. You may have smelled your mom's brownies. The inside of your nose is like being a big, damp cave designed to catch and keep odor molecules. So one of our vocabulary words is scents. Scents are odors and smells. When you sniff a flower, odor molecules rush up through your nostrils. Nostrils, one of our vocabulary words, is the two holes that are on your nose that help smells of molecules go up your nose. Smell receptors are inside your nose and those receptors are tiny parts deep inside your nose that catch the smell or scent from the air. The smell receptors tell your brain about the molecules you just sniffed and your brain sends a message back to you and says, hmm, that's a sweet smelling flower. Here's a little diagram for us to look at. People can identify a huge number of different kinds of smells and odors between four and five thousand and ten thousand. Four thousand and ten thousand. That's how many. That sure is a lot of odors that we can identify. This is because we can tell the difference between many different odor molecules. And we have, here's the molecules going up this person's nose, and we may not even see them. And here's the smell receptors, these little guys right here. They're the ones that are saying, hmm, I better send a message to the brain up in here and tell him that's the smell of a flower. So there you have it. We're lucky to be able to smell so many odors even though sometimes they smell bad, like a skunk. Some animals, like dogs, have an even better sense of smell than humans. How many of you have a dog at home? Dogs have 25 times more smell receptors than humans. Dogs have to sniff really hard to get the odor molecules all the way up their nose to meet their receptors. If you've ever seen a dog walking with its nose to the ground, you may even be able to hear him going, sniff, sniff. People sniff too, especially when they want to figure out where a smell is coming from or what a smell means. Can everybody inhale and sniff for me? Inhale, go through your nose, hold it. Exhale. 
Here's a young boy. If you had trouble sniffing just now, then it may be because your nose is stuffed up. When you have a stuffy nose, it means your nostrils are full of mucus. Mucus is one of our vocabulary words. Mucus is that slimy, slickery stuff that's inside your nose. And it comes out. Sometimes we blow it out in a Kleenex. You always have mucus in your nose and other parts of your head. But when you're sick with a cold or if you have allergies, your body makes even more of it. Mucus. Mucus, however, is very important. It traps dirt that might be floating around in the air when you breathe, and it keeps, from, keeps it from going further into your body. So mucus is a good thing. If you are sick, the extra mucus can stuff up your nose or cause it to run. When there is extra mucus in your nose, it is hard for older molecules to travel high enough into your nose to reach the smell receptors. The odor molecules are blocked or stopped by the mucus. To block something, which is a vocabulary word, means to stop from getting through. That means that when your nose is stuffed up with a cold, you can't smell things very well as when you were healthy. And when that happens, it's time to grab a tissue and blow your nose. Your sense of smell can help protect you. For instance, if smoke molecules travel through your nostrils to your smell receptors, your brain will know there's a fire somewhere, and you will know that you will need to get away from the fire. Even if you are not sure you smell smoke, you only think you do, it is better to leave the area and have an adult check to see if there is a fire. Better safe than sorry. Sometimes you hear that phrase, better safe than sorry, is a saying that means it's better to take your time and be careful when doing something than it is to rush ahead or ignore a warning and risk getting hurt. But your sense of smell doesn't only tell you about bad things or dangers. It can be a lot of fun to sniff because many things smell so great. You have, have you ever smelled chocolate chip cookies in the oven? Or how about this? Buttery popcorn. Ugh. Next time you're enjoying your favorite scent, try to remember that odor molecules are hitting up your smell receptors and telling your brain, wow, that smells great. Let's do a comprehension check. What was our topic today? If you said the sense of smell, you were correct. Number two. What kind of molecules go into your nose and make up scents? That's right, odor molecules. What do we call the tiny pieces of things in the air that are too small to see? Molecules. They're so tiny, but uh, things in the air, and they are too small for us to see. Number three. How do odor molecules get in our nose? And where do they go from there? Our odor molecules get in through our nose, through our nostrils, the two holes in our nose, to the smell receptors that's way up in our nose, and then the smell receptors send information to the brain. Once the odor molecules get inside the nose, through the nostrils, where do they go next? I just told you. Yes, they go to the smell receptors. After the smell receptors catch the odor molecules or the scents, where do they send that information about those odors? Yes, to our brain, and our brain will tell us what's going on. How can your sense of smell help you? Be very careful with your answers. Can they help you from harm? Yes, if we could smell smoke, we would know to get an adult or get away fast. What are some ways your sense of smell is similar to your sense of sight? Hmm, think that over. What are some ways your sense of smell is different from your sight? You may want to pause the video to answer those two questions with someone that's a partner. Now let's do some word work. In the read aloud, 
you heard they are called odor molecules, and together they make up what we call scents. Say the word scents with me. Scents are smells or odors. On holidays, I can smell many different scents coming from the kitchen. Now, what is one of your least favorite scents or smells? Use the word scents when you tell about it. For example, I do not like the scent of a skunk. Now you think of one and tell someone. What's the word I've been talking about? Sense. Let's make a choice here. Today, I want you to give a thumbs up if that's a nice scent or a thumbs down if that's a bad scent and hold your nose. Here we go. Garbage. Ugh. Hold your nose and that would be a thumbs down. Ugh. How about a rose? Thumbs up and breathe in deep. Oh, that's a nice one. Here's another one. Chocolate chip cookies. Thumbs up. Oh. Rotten eggs. Ugh. Hold your nose and that would be a big thumbs down. What about a skunk? Ugh. Hold your nose and give it a thumbs down. Okay. We had a saying in our story today, better safe than sorry. I'm going to remind you that in our story, if there was a fire or you could smell smoke, you better be safe than sorry. It might help us to know that we should get away instead of being so curious. Tell an adult, if you woke up one morning and it looked very cloudy, but you weren't sure whether it was going to rain or not, do you think that you might want to take an umbrella? That would be a better safe than sorry. Because if it didn't rain, it didn't matter if you took the umbrella. But if it did rain, you might want the umbrella. So that would be better safe than sorry. Well, that's all for today, kids. Let's see if we can think about our sense of smell and try to understand that smells and those older molecules, those tiny little particles that go up into our receptors, help our brain. Today, maybe you'll want to go around and sniff some things in the house just to see if those receptors are really working. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.